The only way to be a woman is to be born female. There is no such thing as a trans woman. No man is ever a subset of woman. There are only men pretending to be women, female impersonators. So to these men I say, you will never be a woman. Your attempted appropriation of my sex is offensive to me. I will never call you woman or trans woman. I will not use preferred pronouns. I correctly sex everyone. Stay out of our spaces, sports, and prisons. Right. Yeah. I will never submit to your ideology or your perversions. To everyone else on the side of sanity, I say, do not use the language of the opposition. There is no such thing as trans. Just people pretending to be the opposite sex. Do not be kind. Being kind got us here. Be brave instead. If you can speak the truth clearly and plainly, then we will take back this reality and we will win the gender war. Thank you, Christina. That was a wonderful, that was a wonderful speech. We stand together side by side. We will defend our rights. We stand together side by side. We will give up this fight. For women's rights are human rights. We won't let you forget. For women's rights are human rights. This isn't over yet. The ACLU and their friends may think we can be count. Our minds and bodies will defend. Our no will ring out loud. For women's rights are human rights. We won't let you forget. For women's rights are human rights. This isn't over yet. One more. So give us a hand in sisterhood. Our sex won't be denied. For dignity, reality, we are standing side by side. Fortunately, we have a lot of friends across the world. I'm very friendly with a lot of the people in the UK. My daughter actually lives in the UK and I've met some TERFs there. Yay, TERF Island. Thank you. If you've watched this, we love you guys. Um, they are blazing a trail similar to ours. In the UK, you can actually be visited by police for saying something like, only women have cervixes. And I want you to say this with me right now. Only women have cervixes. We have not, we have to have an American uh, uh, Civil Liberties Union that protects women. We're half the population that protects children, that protects parents' rights. I mean, they are, they are undermining the American dream and the American way. So we've gathered people together, a bunch of a bunch of great, you know, activists that have been working diligently on this for years. And we are finally at the second layer of this. It's not just point and say man anymore. It's point and say the ACLU is responsible. They are hired by the billionaire cabal that is pushing this agenda, this gender identity agenda down our throats. So we are taking aim at the ACLU and I would like to introduce our first speaker, Amanda, Amanda Stillman. Instead of protecting the religious liberties of those whose beliefs, whether atheistic or religious, who do not believe in gendered souls, who do not believe you can be born in the wrong body, instead of protecting these actual civil liberties, equal protection, the right to free speech, the right to religious liberty. Instead of this, the ACLU has staked its reputation on advocating for denial of reality, denial of biology, 
in support of a Tinkerbell religion, a belief system that only survives as long as we clap along and pretend. Well, we're not clapping and we're not pretending. Male rapists and murderers are men, no matter their sex stereotype feelings. Male runners and swimmers are men, no matter how girly they may feel. Males who want to pee in the ladies' room are men. Children and adults who want to pump themselves full of wrong sex hormones, chop off healthy body parts, and have a pretend penis sewn onto their bodies or create a hole where their penis used to be cannot change sex and it is a lie and it is cruel to pretend that they can. We're not clapping, we're not pretending, and if the ACLU collapses, once everyone wakes up from this trance, good riddance, it cannot happen soon enough. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll explain my sign. The letters are kind of falling apart, um, but you can read it says protect. It said protect women and children, not gender identity. Tea to fly. Yeah, so now that you, you get the idea what it means, it also says adult human female. And the problem, the, the root issue with this is the this idea that gender identity is something real and something that needs to be protected in law. but. It's not real. If, if a person wants to believe in it, that's fine, but protecting gender identity in law is what allows men to identify as women and be put into prisons with women. It allows men to identify as women and be put in women's domestic violence shelters. It allows men to identify as women and be put into women's bathrooms, into locker rooms. I know many of us have probably seen these dudes hanging out. And it's because it's a protected characteristic. So you need to speak up against it. You need to fight it in law. The ACLU is upholding the lie that men are women. They are protecting men's crimes against women. Previously, these men would have been prosecuted for voyeurism, indecent exposure, and sexual harassment. And instead, the ACLU is setting precedents in law that women and girls do not have the right of consent, do not have the right to boundaries around their body, do not have the right to privacy, modesty, or fairness. The ACLU no longer represents us. I canceled my subscription to donate to them. Me too. We cannot work within this anymore. The corruption is too profound. The destruction is too great. The danger is too dire. We must rip it down and start something new. Women are human beings. I will not rest. I will till my dying day stand and die on this hill this is the fight because if we lose the definition of a woman which is an adult human female we lose everything right. once you change the definition of what a woman is in law every piece of legislature that mentions the word woman has a different meaning no longer means anything it no longer stands for women i mean recently i was reading something that it referred to people that um jennifer's last protest at in new jersey in trenton at the prison there they referred to us as goons now i was one of the tallest ones there and i'm five four so I, I kind of think it's funny. I mean, I've never been called a goon in my life, but I'm a goon and these poor men in the dresses and the wigs and with their long history of sexual offenses, they're the victims. This is who the ACLU defends over me, over all these women, over our mothers and grandmothers, our sisters, our daughters. This is who they choose to defend. Violent, perverted, sick men who hate women so much that they think we're just a costume to wear. So I say the ACLU is gone, it's dead, whatever it stood for is gone. And I say shame on you, ACLU, shame. Thank you. Our newspapers, are, if you see an article that says, a woman child molester, age 45, six foot five, has been arrested on such and such street, blah, 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 suspected of pedophilia. And you go to the article and you search and search until you see a mugshot and you find out that it's a man. Well, that, that messes with our data collection and that has repercussions. You know, women will be sentenced harsher. 
they'll be in um, prison longer. And they're in prison with men that will rape them. And there is no consent in prison. There is no way a woman can consent. First of all, the men they're putting in there, if Ted Bundy were alive today, he would be allowed to identify as a woman and transfer into a woman's prison. Dana Rivers, you know, killed two people, killed what? Two, two, two women and one and their son. You know, he's allowed in there. There is the, the men that they are putting in there are meant to rape the women and get them pregnant. There's, I mean, like, there's no other explanation for this. I'm a lifelong Democrat. I got a little bit famous a couple of years ago for my role in electing a Democrat, Doug Jones, to the United States Senate right here. Go ahead and call me right wing. Find out what happens. Find out. Call me names and see how I vote. Keep it up. You're doing great. I used to be a card-carrying member of the ACLU. Now I find them utterly repulsive. Yes. They claim to be a nonprofit civil rights organization, but they represent a very narrow view belonging to a shrinking minority of Americans. Beliefs are ideas, luxury beliefs, are ideas and opinions that confer status on the upper class while inflicting costs on everyone else. Gender identity is a luxury belief. Only a minority of Americans shares this belief. The rest of us find it increasingly objectionable. No majority of Americans will tolerate being forced to perform and share a belief they find objectionable, nor should they. We are Americans! That's right. That's right. Today's American Civil Liberties Union is neither American nor civil. <laughs> they want to disunite us. They advance the privileges and entitlements of a special group of men by abolishing the rights of women to fair sports. Single sex, prisons, restrooms, locker room spaces, free speech, sports, all under the rubric of gender identity. This totalitarian program is justified by supposed threats of magical harm to supposedly vulnerable people if we do not obey. As seen in the example of author J.K. Rowling, this is the modern ideological witch hunt. It does not matter how fair and considerate our words are. Everything we say in defense of our freedoms is recast as hate because they hate it. It is reframed as sorcery because they think magically. We are guilty of black magic. We're harming the poor little deers with our bad thought vibrations. 1693 in Salem, that's what it is. Right. It is religious thinking. We're Americans, we have a civic religion already. We object to the new gender religion being imposed upon us. We reject a dogma that requires we confess to believe in transubstantiation of the flesh through the utterance of pronoun prayer. That's right, that's right. we object. Yesterday's ACLU fought to give Americans access to the courts. Today's ACLU works to limit the time that children and families have for filing malpractice claims against so-called gender medicine. They accuse us of being single-issue voters. I just spent a month protesting outside Johns Hopkins University because they employ a pedophile activist in their Moore Center for the Prevention of Child Sexual Abuse. Dr. Alan Walker, an open pedophile advocate. They hired to stop pedophiles under the guise of maps, of map advocacy, minor attracted people. It's a misnomer for pedophiles. Dr. Walker's book is titled, A Long Dark Shadow, Minor Attracted People in Their Pursuit of Dignity. Walker is talking about pedophiles, pedophiles in their pursuit of dignity. Walker claims to have inter interviewed 24, quote, non-offending pedophiles in order to write this book that she dedicated, quote, to those who accept themselves, those who are working on it, and those who accept others even when it's hard. She's talking about pedophiles. She claims to have interviewed 42 non-offending pedophiles to write this book. 
In the book, she talks about how some of them detail to her their use of child sexual abuse material, what other people know as commonly child pornography. Nearly bald when arrested in 2002, Jason Michael Ham now has long blonde pigtails. The state will reduce the appearance of his Adam's apple. What could be the purpose of what in the animal and plant species are called predatory mimetics? Adaptation, yes, and Amy has Woo! videos about this on Known Heretic. Um, of many predatory animals and plant species that allow them to trick their prey by mimicking their sex character or their characteristics. The prey lowers their guard, fooled that they are dealing with one of their own when they are dealing with someone who wants to maul them. That is what this despicable policy is about. That is what so-called trans women are. Predatory mimetics. And they are men. They are violent men. Yes. Female prisoners in 47 out of 50 states are being placed in cages with violent males, most of whom are intact male sex offenders. This is not progressive nor enlightened. It is cruel and unusual punishment. Yes, it is. It is as Amy Achikawa, as Women to Women, says, is a live experiment on these female inmates. When the Geneva Conventions were enacted following World War II, the Hague created a lot of international human rights laws, and we all agreed to them all over the world because we never wanted to have barbarity like that conflict showed. And one of these laws was Article 25, Section 4, in 1949 at the Hague, placing men and women in prison together is wrong and cannot be done sight. because inevitably Make women no get mistake. raped and Woke murdered by is the a men. War. They'll, they'll vilify women and children for not being kind uh, or obedient enough to let men violate their boundaries and gaslight them and don't, and don't forget to use sex incorrect pronouns or they, although they demand, or else more emotional blackmail and punishments for disobedient uh, women. Leftists might as well say just let the violent rapist have his or her way and stop being such a Karen and leave these poor rapists and child abusers alone. Live and let live. This is the left's rabid misogyny that, how, that may have somehow surpassed the political rights traditional misogyny and I didn't even think that was possible. The left hates women so much that we can't even have words or spaces for ourselves. They, they have also compared women for women's rights to Nazis unironically. Where have I heard this before? It's like fighting to take down safeguarding measures to protect women and children wasn't enough for, uh, for these so-called liberals and leftists. They have to swing around their progressive pride flags and virtue signal while doing it. But that's not enough. They have to coddle these male abusers. But that's not enough. They have to act like they're smarter and kinder in contrast to non-believers, which they assume to be hateful idiots. But that's not enough. They have to excommunicate heretics, especially he female heretics, for simply initiating this difficult conversation. I'll note that I've lost countless acquaintances for my blas blasphemy, both with normies and, and radfems, for that matter. But that wasn't enough. They, they have to insult and vilify and dismiss people, especially women who speak up against harmful nonsense without even addressing anything we actually said. But that's not enough. They have to act like underdog revolutionaries. When universities, media, huge corporations, billionaires, government agencies, etc., are on their side. But that's not enough. They have to go out of their way. They have to go after livelihoods, and apparently that's leftist solidarity with working class and impoverished people. But that's not enough. They have to post passive-aggressive, condescending, gaslighting, friendly reminders that you don't have to know all the nuances of gender identity, supernatural belief, a, a supernatural belief, to know that they know better, better than you. But that's not enough. They wouldn't dare consider that they and their precious political side may be wrong on anything. I went along with this gender nonsense for, for a bit, and, and I admit I was wrong, and I wouldn't be surprised if all my, my details aren't completely correct. Um, but that's not enough. They have to silence uh, any person, especially women, who question their dogma. But that's not enough. They have to police the anger, sadness, and disgust I and other people, especially women, feel about who, 
who dare to speak up about these issues, but that's not enough. They have to deny the existence of cancel, cul cancel culture, deplatforming, de uh, banning books, shutting down meetings, shutting down social media accounts, firing people, forcing them into destitutions, mobs harassing everyday people, especially disobedient, in a burn the witch, after her, burn her type of way. Whenever I see people like the if you see, uh, ACLU, um, virtue signal with their with their pronouns and, and progressive pride flags and anything related to this tyr tyrannical homophobic religion i think of the harm done to women and children i mean this is not a right wing issue if you if somebody calls you right wing that's just because they don't want to hear what you're saying yes so yes, it's a human issue i have a job now and i won't tell you where but i have a rule and my rule is i won't lie I don't have to bring it up, I don't have to put it in anyone's face, but if I am asked to be in a room that is supposed to be women only, and there are men in there, I will leave. Yeah. If somebody asks me to use their, to tells me their pronouns, I'll just say, pronouns are immutable, that's my belief. Yeah. You just don't lie. Right. You don't have to be mean, you don't have to be militant, you just have to never lie. And if you take that commitment to radical honesty, not only am I free now of all the anger and confusion, Woo and fear that, was, that lived in me, you just have to take the risk. You've got the, the big ACLU plus a couple other legal organization bubbles. Socially, they're completely self-referential, but the rest of life isn't. And that is where new organizations can be created. Don't forget, the ACLU are just people. Lawyers are just people, and they can be stupid, they can be critiqued. You don't need to be a lawyer to say the ACLU is crazy. Thank you so much. And look at that. Look what our Beacon of Hope brought. We brought a lawyer. And we're going to be bringing more lawyers. We need a clan of lawyers to go after the ACLU. A, you know, we, a group that, that is dedicated to dismantling the ACLU because it does not serve the American people. It actually goes against what most of us believe. So if you want to get involved in the ACLU and dismantling it, I am Rev Fem Street Beat on Twitter. Um, and you can reach me at freespeechforwomen at gmail.com. Thank you so much for everyone that attended and all the lovely, wonderful speeches. Thank you.